So, finally, we've got the Seneca Eagle Claw in 25 caliber. We're gonna shoot three types of ammo out of it at 100 yards. And um, it's gonna be my final review on 25 yards for the Seneca Eagle Claw. And when I say, trust me, I've tried a lot of different stuff through it. This is what I mean. Chronograph, blah, blah. Old target. Oh, that's not cool. Anyway, when I say I've tried a lot of stuff through it, I really have. And I mean, this is just... You know, it's a lot cheaper to use paper plates to get your initial data. But when I tell you that the three kinds of ammo I'm going to shoot through here is the best that shoots out of this gun. And I've picked one economy, good for plinking, good for squirrels, rabbits, um, birds, you know, pigeons, whatever you do. Um, I've got a good economy budget ammo that shoots really good compared to most of the stuff I've shot through it. I've got a really decent um, harder hitting uh, pellet that's hollow point that's going to be really good for your raccoons and squirrels, rabbits, you know, small game, medium, small game, crows. And then I've got a slug. And uh, so I'm going to shoot three groups. And, uh, yeah, I'll film through the, the Sightmark Wraith 4K Max. This thing is pretty cool. It's really heavy. This, I'm not going to review it right now. It's a, it's a pretty cool unit. Um, the only thing is, being digital, you got to, like, cram this thing back as far as you can because it's not like a normal scope. You don't have eye relief. So the closer you can get your eye to it, the bigger and better the picture is. So that's why I've got that thing slid all the way back. But anyway, I'm going to shoot some groups and uh, we'll go through the scope from here. So this is the Griffin Air Gun Ammo 0.250 28-grind TCHP. And we're on power level 8. This is the best consistent I can get. Shoot at that diamond right there. Nine ninety one, nine seventy nine. Look at that, nine seventy one. Nine sixty six, nine fifty two, nine forty four, nine thirty five. Nine twenty-eight. It's probably a standard deviation of like ninety-five, nine, like nine. What was it?
So basically probably an average of 55 foot-pounds energy. Okay, I'm gonna fill this thing back up and shoot another group with the two pellets. So these are the Benjamin air gun ammo, 25 caliber, 27.8 grain domed pellets. These are the best budget plinking, you know, small game ammo that I've found that you can shoot out of here. I'm on power level five. So there was our slugs right there. That's some other random stuff I was testing. Nine hundred and two feet per second. I don't sort pellets either. Just out of the box. 904. Eight ninety seven. Sucks when you shoot your bullseye away. 885. I'll fill it up one more time and uh, we'll shoot the third type of ammo through it. These are the Action Barracuda Hunter, 25 grain, 27.4 grain pellet. These are what I would recommend as a good all around hunting pellet from squirrels, rabbits, raccoons, skunks possums, you know, pretty much all of your um, small medium game, which you probably could do with the Benjamins. It's just, I, I'm a firm believer in hollow points. So anyway, here goes an eight shot group, power level five at 25 yards. Nine 
To be honest, I think these pellets are a little bit more hold sensitive, but they are typically more accurate than anything else. And that's it. I'm going to switch over to the GoPro um, and come at you guys with some data and a full review. Well, it's over. The review of the Seneca Eagle Claw is over. We've got three kinds of ammo it likes to shoot. We're going to go over that. It likes the Griffin .250 TCHP 28 grain. Here's what it looks like. It has this really hollow base. And it likes to be shot at power level 8. The numbers for it are 8 round group, full fill, velocity, 997, 994, 986, 981, 970, 958, 953. The foot pounds of energy from start to finish started at 61 and it finished at 56.4 foot-pounds of energy. And this is its group. This is one MLA paper, so each square is an inch. So you're looking at 5 eighths to 3 quarters of a group there, center to center. I recommend that ammo for Coons and bigger. It's not the most devastating ammo I've shot out of here. There's stuff that's hit way harder, but accuracy is king. So you can hit something with 70, 80 foot pounds out of this gun, but if you don't hit it in the right spot or you miss, <laughs> what, what good is that 70 to 80 foot pounds? My second ammo of choice is this Barracuda Hunter. It's 27.47 grains. It's 25 caliber. Its numbers are 942, 943, 914, 923, 916. 
the shot string started out at 54.1 foot pounds of energy and ended at 51.1 foot pounds of energy. And uh, here's its group. It's usually like this accurate, but it's hold sensitive. So for some reason, when you shoot this thing, you got to hold this in because when you fire it, it'll actually try to blow your probe back a little bit. Not all the way, but you'll feel it. You'll know what I'm talking about if you've shot this gun, especially on high power. And certain things like the probe pushed in there tight and held in there tight. And certain things, it don't matter. You can let it try to kick back out if it wants to. Um, so that's, for some reason, that's one of the ammos that are really sensitive to that. So anyway, here's its group. Here's my numbers. And it's probably right at three quarter if you're looking at it because it's one pellet width. So yeah, about three quarter, but it shoots. Here's a, where is it at? Here is one I shot and that was uh, five rounds at 25. So, I mean, that's what it's capable of if you really take your time. It is a really accurate pellet out of there. Um, my recommended budget, squirrel, rabbit, smaller birds, pigeons, whatever, is the Benjamin. It's a 27.8 grain, 25 caliber. Just It's like a Crossman Premier Domed. It's actually really accurate out of here. It's a cheap pellet. Normally they're kind of banged up on the skirts and stuff. I didn't sort any of this. Um, I'll read you its numbers. 902, 903, 904, 907, 897, 897, 897, 897, 897, 890, 0.3 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle um also for my pellets i shoot them at five power and that griffin air guns ammo the tc hp and 28 grain i shoot it at eight power if you shoot it at nine power which is max power you'll get a group like that with it but you'll be cooking some numbers like 1069, 1065, 1051, 1051, 1047, 1036. So where's my phone? Let me tell you the FPE to that real quick. So I mean if you wanted to really quick and there was a coyote or something. That's 70 foot pounds with a 28 grain pellet. And then the final shot string out of that. Thousand thirty. Sixty-five. So started at 70 and ended at 65 foot pounds. So if you needed to, and say you were out squirrel hunting or something and you had those slugs in it and you seen a coyote you could turn that power wheel up one notch and gain how much did i say basically 10 foot pounds of energy with one click of a notch and i mean you'd be within an inch and a half roughly i'm not a fan of that i like accuracy i've tested all of this um, extensively. It's taken me three weeks. Um, these shoot okay. These shoot at like a one inch group. Let's see where those are. I don't know. But there's a lot of stuff that just shoots like garbage. I don't know why. Look, inch and a quarter at 25. It's terrible. 
I mean, if you really wanted to, yeah, here's the JSB. One inch at 25, not a fan of that. Um, I like my groups to be, you know, pretty much one ragged hole, you know, ragged hole groups. You know, something I can quarter with, cover with at least a quarter. Yeah, um, there's some Nielsen's, one inch. Yeah, here's the... Here's that high power, the best group I got with these. Uh, four went into there, one went there. So, I mean, there's potential, I don't know, um, for those to be shot at high power. There's the Barracuda Hunters. There's the Benjamins. See that, five eighths. I like to do all my preliminary testing on uh, paper plates, they're way cheaper. Where was there's Barracuda Hunter Extremes? Those are five eights. Not as good though. It shot like two, then three or something. Goofy there. Not started out at four seven forty seven foot pounds, ended at forty five. I don't know. You can't shoot those as hot either for some reason. Um, they just don't stabilize as well. So let's talk about the gun. So we've seen the accuracy, we've seen the foot pounds, we see what it likes. I'll put links in the description. The magazines, let's talk about the magazines. Let's just talk about negatives. So these magazines, let me get something out. Okay, here's a Nielsen. Nielsen specialty. Nielsen specialty. These are uh, 43.5s. One of the heavier things I've shot out of here. See the base on this? It's completely flat. These magazines, see a pellet skirt? You load them from the back, skirt first. So this is the face of the magazine. This is the back, this is where the probe comes in. There's like a little click retention thing. So it doesn't actually use the pellet. It won't fall through because the skirt catches it. It literally will catch it and stop it from sliding back all the way through, all the way through the magazine. It won't slide back. This pellet, these pellets will do that. It cannot fall out of the back. This Griffin slug here the one it actually likes, surprisingly, has this like a pellet-like skirt. You see that? Same thing. You can load it in. It will not fall out the back. Like you, you will not jam this pellet. See, it won't fall out. But you put one of these suckers in it, or any other slug brand. Oh, uh, it won't do it now. Well, a lot of times, and people that have shot this rifle or own this rifle will know what I'm talking about, but these pellets will, they'll fall out the back. And when that happens, you see this huge like hole? It's not a tight fit around that probe at all. It'll fall back there and jam your lever mechanism. I haven't had it happen. I've had it halfway happen. And it's no bueno. And it sucks. So when you're run if you do find something, you know, that can fall back through the through the back of the magazine, um you have to be really careful to not tip this rifle up while you're working the lever cuz it'll fall through the magazine and into this little chamber back here. And you'll like you'll start crunching and grinding the pellet up in there. And uh, it's just not cool. I don't, I'm not like a super duper air gun, air gun smith. So, I mean, I might would, I probably could get it, you know, I would just be really uncomfortable during the whole process. We'll just say that. Um, so that's another cool thing about it, actually liking those 28 grain slugs they have that skirt they catch in the magazine 
they don't uh, fall back. Or at least they haven't for me. So, so you won't have to worry about that. But that is one big con about this rifle. Stick my finger in there almost if the probe didn't get in the way. Um, another really big con on this rifle is the check valve in here. If you cannot fill this gun up and like instantly bleed the pressure between your fill source and the rifle, like instantly, that check valve will stick open and you'll drain all of your air. So if you have a hand pump or uh, like an air tank or something, something that you cannot just like bleed it like quick, like all the way out quick, it will stick open. I've done it with this because I like slowly cracked it open and all the air will just start rushing out and you'll lose all of the air in your cylinder. So that being said, if you are fine with these things, get this rifle. I like it. If you've been looking at it and those things do not bother you, then yeah, it's great. You can put a Donny FL adapter tip on here. You can run whatever. Um, I, me I emailed them and talked to them and I asked them, I was like, what do I need to put on here to make it quiet? And uh, cause it's got pretty good power. And he told me the Ronin and to go 30 cal to prevent clipping and i haven't had any clipping this is the 30 cal and it helps a lot um i'm not going to do a db test db tests are they're not accurate i mean you you can get an idea but to do a real sound test it's not just a simple db meter you need thousands of dollars of equipment to do an actual proper sound test um i would say on high power without the moderator that this is not backyard friendly with pellets on power level five which is what mine shoots around 880 900 to like 880 where it is the most accurate with the most amount of power that i can put through it without the groups going crazy it's backyard friendly, I would think, unless you're like in a real, I don't want to, um, snowflake neighborhood. But if you got, you know, obviously you're always going to have that pellet hitting something. And I mean, this has got power. It's going to make noise when it hits your backstop. It's going to make noise when it hits your target. I'm fortunate enough to where... I live out here and I don't gotta worry about it. Thank goodness. Um, yeah, um, it's a heavy rifle. I would say eight, nine pounds by the time you put a scope moderator on it. It's really long. I don't normally run the moderator at night when I do raccoons or possums or whatever, just because of the extra length. And it doesn't really seem to matter um, because you're pretty much already stealth anyway, like, you know, darkness is your camouflage, <laughs> you know, um, versus stuff during the day that does rely on eyesight and hearing more. Hey buddy, what are you doing? Um, yeah, um, it's wicked. It's, uh, I'll give you, uh, an idea on high power two magazines so power eight nine if you find a slug that it shoots well other than what i've found let me know i want to know um eight nine you get about two mags 16 shots um on power level five for pellets three mags i think you probably could get four mags so that would be what um 32 shots maximum so that's shots per fill it's not bad i haven't hand pumped it i have a hand pump i'm just i have a pump now uh i hope i never have to go back to the hand pump to be honest you guys that do hand pump i know you're paying man and uh 
an air compressor, I don't think I really recommend that one. That one puts a lot of water into stuff. Um, you have to be really careful with uh, making sure it doesn't put water into your gun. There's much better options out there that are probably a little more, but I haven't got into that stuff yet, and I will eventually one day. Um, yeah, so in a couple more days, I need to get more of these slugs because huh, I'm almost out. I only had 35. Um, I'll order a couple hundred of those from Griffin's Air Guns ammo. And uh, we'll do a 50 yard. And uh, I don't really think I'll do a 100 yard. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see like a 75 yard. I'll do a 75 yard. I don't. It's an air rifle. Um, you know, I know that people shoot out that far and stuff. I normally don't unless it's just like sometimes I'll have like starlings or European house sparrows out there on them on that penning and that's like 70 to 80 yards depending on where they land on there and uh i might you know with a pellet try to zoom one out and it's fun you know sometimes i'll sit back here see there's a european oh no is that that might be a kingbird i'm not for sure is it yeah that's not a sparrow He's good. He ain't going to get killed. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, every once in a while they do. Especially uh, when they start putting grain out and stuff. You'll see a lot of sparrows. And uh, I'll try my best to do my number on them. Yeah, there's one that just flew off of the barn there. That was a sparrow. So, I will try to shoot them um, every once in a while. You know, probably once a week or two. I'll just literally sit in my chair and plank at them or whatever. And... Uh, just kind of have fun um and uh, it is pretty accurate once you uh once you take a shot with that i've got like a uh, a mill reticle in that swamp fox lpvo it's not first focal plane it's second focal plane so i just leave it at eight and uh, once i see where that first pellet goes man i can literally start lasering them out there from from right here and uh most of the time and i mean if you think about a sparrow it's like what a two inch target maybe three you know if you're lucky got the right angle on one um so to put that much energy on a sparrow with an air rifle it's kind of fun so anyway that's my review i like it i wanted a hunting rifle um i had that gamo coyote for three years four years i don't know it's been a while and um it just didn't really cut it when it came to coons and stuff. I mean, unless you zapped them right in the head. But, I mean, it just didn't really cut it. And I wanted something that I could put more power in. And uh, while we're talking about that, that's why I recommend hollow point. I shot, I've shot a, a rabbit, a possum, and a, uh, a wild feral cat that was over at my mother-in-law's with this, with the, the dome, as actually with these domes. And it was a clean pass through and that pellet just pshoom, went right through it and they just took off running. And I mean, I know I hit them good. Um, I don't, I normally don't shoot unless, you know, I, I feel pretty good about the shot unless it's like a bird or something. Like I said, you know, because at that point, you know, you don't feel too guilty about it. Um, and even like the rabbit took off running for the hills. And I mean, he died. It took him. He probably ran a good 40 yards. And I mean, I have chest cavity shot him. Pretty sure double lunged him. Blood, pretty good amount of blood. Um, yeah, coming out of his nose and his mouth. So I know I got a lung. It's just, uh, I don't really think that those transfer a lot of energy into the target. And that's why I was like, I got to get me some hollow points. And uh, that's where I started. I need to try some Hades. They're just out of stock everywhere. So I got some of these and it loves those. It loves those. Absolutely loves those. So 
I have yet to shoot something a little bigger with that, but that hollow point excites me. Um, that slug's got a hollow point, so you know it's going to transfer its energy. So anyway, I'm out of here. I'm going to let you guys go. Enjoy the video. Like and subscribe. Um, leave a comment if you guys have got something that shoots good. And I mean not, not trying to beat up on you if your groups aren't this tight. I hope they're tighter and that there's something different that I'm not shooting and you guys tell me. You know, so anyway, see you guys. And this is Chuck with Chuck's Outdoors. And uh, I'll try to do some editing or whatever, see if I have to blurt myself out. See ya.